That route map just looks absolutely beautiful, and I'm absolutely sure that it is perfect, but the only way to find out is to apply it. So that's what we're going to do right now on Router 1. We're going to redistribute the RIP and connected routes from Router 1 into the OSPF domain. We're only going to apply the route map to the RIP routes themselves, because those are the ones named in the ACL anyway. And let's just make sure that everything works beautifully. So let's go ahead and start that route redistribution. What I want to do first is do the redistribution without the route map so we can see the results and then we'll come back, take that off, and we'll go ahead and apply the route map. So we're going to go router OSPF1. We don't need a seed metric. We'll do a redistribute RIP subnets because we know we want that. And a redistribute connect with subnets. We know we want that. And let's go out to 3 and 5 and see what we can see. And there they are, all these OE2 routes. You can see the costs of each one. You can see the AD, of course, and the code being E2. And let's go over to five. We expect to see the exact same thing, or close. And there you go. There are the four external routes that R5 is learning about, and that's really it. So let's go down back to router one. And no redistribute rep subnets. And then I'm going to do a no redistribute rep. Whoops. You don't have to do those no redistribute rip and no redistribute connected by themselves. I do it because I've seen iOSs where you do no redistribute rip subnets. And it seems to think, oh, okay, he just doesn't want the subnets. So redistribute rip actually stays in the config. Uh, so I learned that little trick a long time ago. You're welcome to use it. No royalties necessary. And let's go ahead and dive right into applying that route map. See how we do that. So we're going to do a router OSPF1. And actually, I didn't need to do the no redistribute. Let's try that again. I didn't need to do the no redistribute connected. Thank you. But I will go ahead and put them right back in. And here's where I'm going to apply the route map. And there it's asking for the route map reference. And there, pointer to route map entries. I like that, it's very formal. So we called it RIP to OSPF. And we actually have, you know, we could set a metric or a metric type or work with tags at this point too, but we're not gonna do any of that. We're just tapping the enter key. And with OSPF, we really shouldn't see, of course, any flapping adjacencies or anything like that, or we're not gonna see them. And let's see what happened on router three in the meantime. And we've got some real changes there. The two, 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 the network two, I'll put it that way, it's a little easier on everybody. Network two has been redistributed and it has successfully been marked as an E1 route and it has had its seed metric doubled. But how do I know that? How do I absolutely know that? Because network 22, we were just changing the route type. That was successful to OE1. And we can see in the brackets next to the network 22 that its cost is 84. And we know that 20 of that is the seed metric. So if we add another 20, of course, that would be 104. And that is indeed the route, uh, excuse me, the cost of network 2. So network 2, we wanted to do two things to it. We wanted to set that seed metric, we wanted to double it and set it to an E1 route type and it was successful. You'll notice now, of course, that with the E1 change, we're seeing the cost for the entire path from the local network to the destination, where before we were just seeing the cost to the ASB, excuse me, from the ASBR to the final destination. Network 22 is good. Where's network 222? It's gone and we wanted it gone. We wanted it filtered and it's no longer being advertised successfully. And everything else has been left alone. Because redistribute connected, of course, I didn't put the route map on that. And 3110, we know for router 3, is an internal route. So we're looking good there. Let's go over to router 5 and see what we see there. Well, let me try that again. It's just hanging on me there. There we go. And we see the same results. We see network 2 has successfully had its seed metric doubled and it's got an OE1 code on it. We see that E1 route, uh, excuse me, the E1 code on network 22, we left that seed metric alone. The costs are gonna be different because the interface types involved are different. 
and then at the bottom the connected route that's being advertised in or redistributed in that was left totally alone so it's still an e2 route and it has a seed metric of 20. so everything looks good and of course the 222 network is totally gone so anything else we ought to do here i know i'm spinning past some stuff we did all this on the live equipment what should we do we need to check or test the fourth clause of that route map because the fourth clause was anything that happens in the future any routes that are redistributed should be left alone should be left to their own devices at their defaults however you want to put it so let's go ahead and add a network to that let's go over to router 2 whoops let's go over to router 2 again yeah it's really hanging I'll take care of that and we'll just call that interface loopback 55 IP address 55 555 probably should give it a mask then we're going to go to router rip and do a network 5000 and we're going to force an update Hopefully, router one sees that pretty darn quickly. So I'm going the arrow there. Now let's do a show IP route rip on router one. We do indeed see the 50, network 55. And that should have been left alone by the route redistribution process. So let's go ahead to three and five and see what they see. And that's a beautiful thing. You see network 55. It's been left at its default code of E2 and the seed metric was left at 20 because that's the only metric it has at this point and that's that's how the catch-all clause works and you know you can call it whatever you want to I like to call it, it's like the, the clause you put at the bottom that's going to apply to anything that didn't get specifically mentioned in L, an earlier clause a numerically earlier clause and let's go over to five oh, that one key is sticking and let's do a show IP route OSPF and we see the exact same thing 55 was successfully redistributed it matched clause 40 which is to say you know it didn't have to match anything and nothing was changed about it so it's got an e2 code and it's got a seed metric of 20 and that is it that is uh the end of the route map lab we've got some more work coming up with route redistribution and i'll see you at the beginning of the next video and we'll hit that